Baseball in the Boroughs is brought to you by Verizon. With my plan, get exactly what you want and only pay for what you need. All right, the All-Star break is over. It's back to baseball. The Mets will begin the second half of their season on Friday night as they host the Dodgers. So it's time for a mid-season report on the Metropolitans. Let's do it. When you're a post-Mets beat writer, that would be Mike Puma, who joins me now. Mike, how was your All-Star break? It was okay. It went fast. <laughs> yeah, it went fast. Baseball never stops. Go. Always continues. Always something to do. Always going. It felt like it was too quick. But we're back to baseball. And, Mike, 42-48 and 48 first half for the New York Mets. Not a record that one would expect for the club with the highest payroll in the sport. So how do you evaluate the Mets' first half of the season? Well, obviously, it was a disappointment. And, and the thing I, I really look at is uh, June, that 7-19 and 19 June, which really sabotaged their season here and, and is pushed them into a hole that uh, is going to be tough to get out of. And but we saw a little bit of progress right before uh, the all-star break uh, with the way the team played. Uh, they had the six game winning streak. Uh, they went four and two uh, on the last road trip. Uh, signs of progress for sure. But now you have to keep up that pace. Uh, you know, you almost have to win. You probably have to win two thirds of your games here to, to really get into this thing. So at six games under, uh, they, they've got a lot of work to do, but certainly the, the first half, uh, a huge disappointment. And, uh, you know, you spread the blame around uh, several areas. Yeah, so you talked about the fact that the Mets will have a lot of work to do, and I think many fans are going to look at the next few weeks. The games leading up to the trade deadline is crucial for this team. So where do you think the Mets have to be at the deadline in order to be buyers? Well, you look at it, they, they got 15 games now before the August 1st deadline. And I I, I really think you, you want to be around 500. Uh, the Mets are six games under now. You know, I, I think you got to look at 10 and 5 as maybe your baseline of uh, uh, what you have to do here to, to, to maybe consider yourselves in it. Um, and listen, if you become buyer, even at, you know, even if you go 10 and 5 and you know, you're right around 500 there at the deadline. I don't know how far in you're going to go as buyers. You know, I, I, I don't think you're going to, you know, mortgage the future for a, for a half season rental or anything like that. But I think, uh, you know, if you pick up a pick up a few games there and move close to 500, I think you, you go out and maybe add some smaller pieces and, uh, you know, try and hang around in this thing. All right, we'll see if the Mets can be around 500 at the time of the trade deadline. Okay, Mike, we're going to try to put some hope out there for the Mets fans. It's been said that baseball is a long season. Our colleague Steve Servey, he recently predicted that the Mets will make the playoffs. So what needs to happen for the Mets to be postseason bound in 2023? And do you think we're going to see an amazing turnaround this summer? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to put myself out there and say that they're going to turn this around again the play. But... I I certainly see the pieces there. This isn't uh, a talent devoid team that, you know, needs some kind of miracle here. We know that there's good players here. Uh, we, we saw some underperformance in the first half, certainly uh, from the starting rotation uh, with uh, Justin Berlin or Max Scherzer, uh, you know, Jose Quintana is on the verge of uh, returning now. So they've, they've got the, the pieces there. And that's, I think what gives you uh, hope as a Mets fan that, you know these guys can play now. Uh, you, you need be, you need better than what you saw from a guy like a Jeff McNeil. Uh, Pete Alonso slumped uh, toward the end of the the first half after coming back from the wrist injury, but you, you saw enough positive signs from uh, Francisco Lindor, Francisco Alvarez. Um, you know, uh, Brandon Nimmo tailed off a little bit toward the, but he was solid for most of the first half. So you know the pieces are there to, to make the run, and that, that that's where your hope is, um, that they come, come out of the shoot strong. I, I made reference today in my column to four years ago, uh, the Mets were 10 games under 500 at the break, and uh, they came out in the second half, 27 and 10, made it interesting uh, late into s September and would have gotten the, the third wild card if there were three wild cards that year. So uh, that's what you hang your hope on right now if you're a Mets fan. 
Yeah, a Mets fan has to hope for that, that the Mets can come out of the break pretty strong and see if they can make the postseason. Mike Puma will be all on top of it for the New York Pets, Mets. Excuse me, he's the beat writer for the New York Post as the Mets will start a series, start their second half against the Dodgers on Friday night. Mike, thank you for the time. We will talk soon. Take care, Dexter.